Today, I want to talk about why potassium makes you energetic and why, if you're deficient, you become fatigued. Now, this topic is quite fascinating because it relates to a pump in all of your cells of the body called the sodium potassium pump. And I'm going to dive in a little bit just to explain what that is and why that is so significant. It has to do with this. Out of all the energy that your body uses to digest, to grow hair, to create motion with muscles, and the energy it takes to run all the enzymes, this little sodium pump takes the lion's share of energy. Nearly 30% of all the energy that is utilized from your body, from the food that you consume, is allocated to this one little pump. Of course, these pumps are in all the cells, but it's interesting that your body is giving that much energy to this one specific function, and many people don't really even know what it is. They've never even heard about it before. Now, the definition of the word pump is slightly different than the sump pump that you have in your basement. It's a biological definition. The definition of this pump is a mechanism for the movement of electrolytes through the cell membrane. So you have this membrane, this cell wall, which is very, very thin. It's like two molecules thick. And electrolytes are electrically charged chemicals, or in this case, electrically charged minerals. And we're talking about sodium and potassium. Very simply, the main goal of this pump is to keep sodium going out and potassium going in. In other words, to keep the potassium inside the cell and keep the sodium outside the cell. That's its goal. Now, when you have different concentrations of electrically charged minerals inside the cell versus outside the cell, you basically create a battery, okay? So the purpose of the sodium potassium pump is to maintain electrical charge so that cell can act as a battery. All right, so now the question is, what is the significance of having your cell maintain electrical charge? What is it actually doing? And that's gonna be the next topic. It has everything to do with four things, primarily. There's other things, but the four primary functions are this, to support neurons in helping the nerves transmit signals, okay? Communication through the body. And I'm talking about all the nerves, including nerves in your brain, the central nervous system. Also to work with calcium to help the muscles contract and relax. So we have nerve and we have muscle function. Also to help the cell establish the correct pH and help maintain fluid control. As you know, if there's a problem with uh, uh, sodium, for example, if it's, you're retaining too much sodium, you're gonna actually, the cells are gonna swell too much, right? So um, the balance of potassium and sodium is very, very important in to maintain the proper volume of fluid through the body. Now, here's what happens when you're low in potassium. And by the way, you also need sodium for this pump to work too, but you need four times as much potassium than sodium. And if we look at sodium versus potassium, more people are deficient in potassium than they are sodium. So what happens when you're low in potassium? Well, the nerves suffer. You start getting brain fog. Why? Because we're talking about the nerves in your brain. Also, you can get slow reflexes, tingling in the nerves, numbness in the nerves, abnormal heart rhythm, because the sodium potassium pump is located in the pacemaker of the heart, which controls the rhythm of the heart. So it affects the brain as in brain fog, or you're gonna have motor nerve problems to the muscle, which could affect the ability to move uh, and, and actually maintain a certain motion for a period of time. So you might get tired a lot faster because you just don't have the sodium potassium pump working effectively throughout the entire body. All right, number two has to do with the ability for the muscles to contract and relax that can show up in cramps, that can show up in fatigue, as in muscle fatigue. It can show up in muscle aches, muscle stiffness, tremors, constipation, because your colon is actually smooth muscle, and that could be a problem. Uh, weakness in general, and high blood pressure, because your arteries have a certain type of muscle that can be dysfunctional. All right, and then we have pH. If you're deficient in potassium, the body has a tendency to be more acid, 
Um, and then fluid control, if there's a potassium deficiency, you can get swelling in the body. I mean, how many people have way too much sodium versus potassium and their ankles are just swollen? When you consume foods higher in potassium, swelling goes away. So I just wanted to show you the, the, the connection between what this sodium potassium pump uh, controls and the effects that it can create if, it, if you're missing the actual raw material that makes up that pump. Now let's go into this last part right here. Uh, how do people become deficient in potassium? Dietary, they don't consume enough foods high in potassium. The foods that have the most potassium would be leafy greens or avocados. Um, so people just don't consume enough. You would have to consume seven to 10 cups of salad or vegetables to get close to your RDAs, which is 4,700. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because potassium is the hardest to get. It's very easy to consume sodium, but it's not as easy to get potassium from your diet. Okay, if you're in diuretics, that could cause a potassium deficiency. Uh, vomiting, diarrhea can deplete you of potassium. If you're a diabetic and you have high insulin, um, that can create a potassium deficiency. If you consume sugar or you're doing a high carb diet, that will deplete potassium as well. The more stress you go through, the more injury you have, the more trauma, the more the body will dump potassium. And lastly, I wanted to talk about this one last thing, keto. What? That's right. Going on a ketogenic diet can cause your body to require more potassium. Why? Because when you go on a ketogenic diet and you lower your carbs, and you don't need the quantity of stored sugar anymore. Sugar actually stores water or fluid. So one sugar molecule will store almost three molecules of water. So basically, the more sugar you consume, the more glycogen you have, the more fluid that you're retaining, like you're a sponge of fluid. So when we cut down the carbs, you lose the fluid. And because these two minerals, sodium and potassium, work together, you're gonna to lose not just sodium, but you're gonna lose potassium. You're gonna end up with a lower amount of potassium. If you're already deficient in potassium, you're gonna be even more deficient. And this is why people get the keto fatigue. This is why they might get cramps. This is why they might get side effects when they go on a ketogenic diet. But not if they're doing the healthy version of keto that I recommend, which is basically consuming foods that give you more of the nutrients that you need. Potassium is important, the B vitamins, a little bit more um, sea salt would be very beneficial. So if you started the ketogenic diet and you feel tired and you feel weak, all you have to do is beef up, no pun intended, the potassium and some sodium and that should go away pretty quick. All right, so that was a very long explanation of why potassium makes you energetic, but I think it was important and I think it's actually incredibly interesting. So thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.